The following program is underwritten by... It's important to handle any pet behavioral issues with love and care rather than pain and punishment. That's why Dr. Roger Mugford from the Company of Animals created the Pet Corrector, which allows you to safely change unwanted behaviors in your dog, like barking with a simple... Order yours today at www.companyofanimals.us. Celebrating the connection with our pets, this is Animal Radio, featuring your dream team, veterinarian Dr. Debbie White and groomer Joey Villani. And here are your hosts, Hal Abrams and Judy Francis. Well, welcome, my friend. You are in for quite a show today. So here's the number. Write it down. You may need it. You may not even need it today, but it's good to have any time. 1-866-405-8405. Here's what's on the lineup today. Brandon McMillan from CBS's Lucky Dog. That's on uh, what Saturday mornings. I usually drool on my pillow when it's on TV. He's it's a cute show. It is a great show, and it's very informative. He's a very informative kind of guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, he, he tells it like I it like is. It. And uh, he'll be back on. This is his second time, I believe. His second or third. Third yeah, time on Animal Radio. On a couple times, yeah. And he's going to be talking about our partner, Fido Friendly, and the Get Your Licks on Route 66 adoption tour that's about to kick off in just a couple of weeks here. It's the seventh annual. They've been, We've doing, been doing this for seven, seven years. years. I, know. I know. Time flies. Also on the show today from Modern Family, Jesse Tyler Ferguson. You uh, know him as Mitchell. Mitchell Pr- Pritchett? Mitchell Pritchett, yes. I know, don't say that too fast. It's hard to... <laughs> on uh, Modern Family, one of my favorite shows. Do anybody else watch it? You don't watch uh, it, Dr. Debbie. No. Show. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I think I would like it if I did watch it. It sounds really cool. It just conflicts with uh, America's favorite brides or something like that. <laughs> Model brides. No, wasn't it tap dancing moms who do game shows on yes. weekends or yes. something? <laughs> it was a group. What do you say we head to the phones for your calls right now? Toll free, 1 866 405 8405. You can also ask your questions directly from the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android and Blackberry. It's a free download thanks to those folks over at Doctors Foster and Smith. So go download it now. Lori, what are you working on for this hour? Well, you know, service dogs are huge these days. They're they're used for everything. Yep. And I'm going to tell you a, a few things that they're being used for now that you're going to go, yeah, they are being used for everything. It, it's just amazing the new jobs that they are finding for dogs. Don't you know it? Okay. You know, my neighbor has one of those seizure alert dogs. That, uh, really? Whenever, yes. Whenever they're about to have a seizure, the dog will go absolutely ballistic. They and- just smell it. Chemical I think, change it's, I think it's some kind of chemical breath or something. change yeah. that they smell. Yeah. Uh, so we'll learn more about that in just a few minutes with Lori Brooks right here on Animal Radio. Well, hello, Jan. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good. Where are you today? I'm in Vernon, Texas. Vernon, Texas. What side of Texas is that? What side of Texas? It's close to Wichita Falls. Is, is that where you live? <laughs> We're on the border. We, we live out in the country. Okay. Well, I have Dr. Debbie here. I hope everything's okay with your pets. What's going on? Um, we, let's see, she's about three years old. We've taken her to the vet quite a few times. They had her on antibiotics, two rounds, and her it, it, skin would be inflamed. J- Jan, I'm going to back up. This is a dog we're talking about? Yeah, I yes, didn't catch that. Chihuahua. I wasn't sure. Okay, what kind of dog? How old? Three years old and Chihuahua. A Chihuahua. Awesome. Okay, so what do you got going on with your baby there? Uh, she's inflamed, her skin is, and she scratches a lot. And they put her on two rounds of antibiotics. Um, she had an odor, and he ended up cleaning her teeth. And then um, that seemed to help. But then her skin got inflamed again, and she's still scratching. Um, mm-hmm. We have okay. a, a antifungal shampoo that we used for several months. And... I don't know that it helped, but he gave her two different allergy shots, and that kind of helped on the itching, you know, the scratching and all. But it's kind of like she's done all that, and she's still having problems. So I don't know if we need to get blood work done or what we need to do. Okay, yeah. Now, and you're, you're describing that she's, at the time that she's itchy, does she also smell at the same time? Yes, and her, her hair will get oily if you don't bathe her at least twice a week. Okay. Yeah, and and definitely I'd say here, you know, blood work might be useful to see if we've got any potential um, hormonal problems like a thyroid problem or other health issues going on. Um, but when I pick up an odor, and a lot of times when a dog has just a, 
I don't want to say stank, but yeah, when they have a stank to them, um, and they're actually having itching, scratching, all of those type of signs, there's a lot we can do by looking into the skin surface. So um, I'll take a slide, look under the microscope, see what kind of critters we might have growing. Because a lot of times, if we're picking up a smelly odor, and we've got some redness on the skin, it's very possible we have some infection, whether it's yeast, bacteria, or what have you. So when you said you're using an antifungal shampoo, um, that makes me wonder if they were concerned that maybe she did have something like a yeast infection, which can be yeasty and stinky and smelly. And if if anyone knows what an infected ear smells like when it has a yeast problem, dogs can get this all over their body anywhere. Um, So it can really produce a pretty potent smell. So that might be something that I'd be looking at doing is check for yeast on the skin. And if possible, we may need to get her on an oral um, anti-yeast medicine. Um, But I definitely like the idea of checking blood work. The other thing I would definitely, definitely look into doing is getting her on a hypoallergenic diet because a lot of these skin problems, allergies, infections, they can be rooted where a pet has a problem with a sensitivity to certain proteins or ingredients in the food. And that kind of starts the whole cascade of itch, redness, infection, itch, redness, infection, and goes on and on. So if we can get to the heart of it with a hypoallergenic diet, you can go a long way there to make her more comfortable. And well, we had her on the wellness, the wellness dog food, and then and that was supposed to be an allergy type dog food. Then we switched her, and she's on potato and duck, and she's been on that okay. for like six months. And okay, that's so I don't know where to go after that. Yeah, I mean, and if you've tried a couple avenues down that road, um, there are different ways that we can go at food allergy. So you were kind of trying what's called the novel protein approach to food allergies. We can go to a hydrolyzed protein diet, and there are some really good ones out there. Uh, Purina makes one, uh, Science Diet makes one, Royal Canin makes one, I believe, um, where they're actually, the proteins of the food are go through a special process so that they kind of trick the pet's immune system so that they can still eat the chicken protein, if you will, and not show an allergic sign to it. So that would be one thing you could do, but it's a hydrolyzed protein uh, that you might want to look into that with your veterinarian. And then really I'd say the the heart of it is to get a sample from the skin. And, you know, I know Hal always says I like to look at the gross things, the ooey things, the gross (laughs) stuff on the microscope, but it really can, to empower your veterinarian to really work with you to try to find the right steps, the right solution, and the right medicines or shampoos, because that makes a big difference. So commonly I hear people getting upset, oh my God, I spent $200 at the vet, and you didn't do anything for me. Well, sometimes if we don't have the right direction, and we're not given that lead of which which path we're going down, we can spend money pretty easily for you, but it may not be in your pet's best interest, or might not be the most effective. So definitely it's well worth looking into those simple skin tests that your vet can do, and I'd encourage you that way. Okay. So hopefully we'll get your baby so that we're not getting that smelling and and so forth and uh, feeling good there. Because this is a rough time of the year. All these pets are out there scratching and itching. So yeah, I know. It seems like one out of every five calls right now is about uh, allergies or something is. this it's time of year. such a big time. Yeah. So you're not alone. We're all there with you. <laughs> Thank you so much for your call. one 866 405 This portion of Animal Radio is underwritten by Stella and Chewy's. You know, pets thrive when they're fed the same food that you get in the wild. And meal mixers are an easy, convenient way to add raw, nutrient-rich meat with wholesome fruits and vegetables and probiotics and antioxidants to any diet. Learn more over at StellaAndChewies.com. You guys, um, Debbie, maybe you can help me here. Um, obviously, you know what uh, like a cat abscess feels, feels like with all that mm-hmm. stuff in there and how it's squishy. That's I just cool. found a place yeah. on Dolly's ear that is like the size of my my index finger. That it's like stuff between two layers of her ear. Ah, it's yeah, it's not an abscess. What is that? What is it's it? An, we call it an oral hematoma. Oral spelled A U R A L. Um, okay. It's basically a blood blister on her ear flap. <laughs> she she said yes. You got it right, Doc. Yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> you got it, Doctor <laughs> Debbie. Yeah, so and it usually occurs secondary to ear infections from dogs scratching, um, shaking their heads. Uh, sometimes it happens just without a reason. Um, but yeah, that's that's something that um, not an infection in the flap. Okay, of the what ear, do I do? Do I take her to the vet? Yeah, you need to take her Put to the vet. Put a hot compress on it. Nah, not going to help. <laughs> really? Not going to help. You're, it, yeah, you're going to need to be drained. Vet. It's either going to need surgery or they need to investigate and see if there needs to be some medication to kind of help with the inflammation. 
Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely going to require veterinary help. Oh darn! I I have never I've, I've had tons of bull. I've never seen this. That was this freaky. is a bulldog. Yeah. English you know, bulldog? yeasty ears and allergies oh, are like yes. peaked right now. Oh, yeah. There you go. And that's what's probably underlying is the ear inf- infections, inflammation, all of that stuff kind of sets up um, for developing these kind of things. Oh, God. Thank you. What is it? Our oral? Oral hematoma. Or just you can say ear hematoma. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, it'll help when I, I, I call in and tell them what it is <laughs> to make the appointment. <laughs> yeah. Funny. The, you know what's really funny is I just saw an English bulldog with an oral hematoma on Friday. Wow. Um, so it's really weird. That's a weird coincidence. But it's the right season, you know, allergy season, ear infection time. Um, yeah. And every time I turn around, she's just scratching at that ear. And I was just saying, I need to put more Zymox in there. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. What's going on with your animals? I have a uh, nine-year-old Jack Russell Terrier that gets car sick. Um, She's a real timid little dog, and she gets really nervous in the car and took her on a trip to try it out. Um, It was about a a two-and-a-half-hour long trip, and she threw up the whole way Mm. um, there. And then on the way back, she was exhausted, so she slept. But the problem is we were going to go on a vacation for about four days. And in the past, we had another dog that we had to put down a couple months ago, and we would just leave them both at home and have someone come in and take care of them uh, several times a day. And that worked out fine, but we really didn't want to leave her alone, and she's never really been kenneled. So I guess my question is, is there anything you can do for the car sickness? I believe it's caused by her getting really nervous. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, there are things we can do for pets that have this problem. Um, but you brought up a kind of a good point there is that for some pets, it's truly a motion sickness problem. But for others, it's really more of an anxiety driven uh, problem. And, uh, you know, we can treat for motion sickness, but if they've got anxiety or a fear for car travel, then it doesn't necessarily um, help them. So um, the first thing is to really kind of figure out which situation it is. If if the sight of your car or just sitting in the car gets your dog salivating and gets them worked up, then we might be dealing more with an anxiety problem than if they're happy-go-lucky, they're in the car for a while, and then they get sick. Um, that might be more of a motion sickness. So um, first thing is really the main way to treat this is to tr- really condition the pet for car travel. So that's basically going to mean that we're going to slowly work up to exposures in the car and preferably not take them for that two-hour car ride until they are actually um, acclimated to the car. So we want to start really baby steps. So we get them maybe close to the car. We treat them. We give them goodies. We make it a pleasant experience. Then we work up to opening the car door, making them sit in the car seat, um, coming back out, and then gradually turning on the car with a pet in it to actually going down the driveway. And the, as we do this, we're only doing little steps. So if at any point the pet shows fear, anxiety, or or get sick to their stomach, we stop because we're not going to win anything by trying to battle through it. We want to make it short, good exposures and make that car become a great thing that they become accustomed to. So that's how we work through that aspect. And eventually we build up to longer and longer exposures within the car. Now, to do that, you might need some other tools to help you. And uh, there's some kind of natural steps we might try. And then there's going to be also some different types of medications that we can look at. So um, if we're looking at a pet that has true motion sickness, I'm going to go for more like Dramamine or a drug called Serenia. Um, Both of those, you can talk to your veterinarian about the right doses. And they can be helpful for a lot of pets with car travel. But beyond that, some kind of natural things that I like to use, um, I'm a fan of the doggy pheromones, um, those scent hormones that have a calming effect on the pet. Mm -hmm. We can use those in preferably a collar format to help them through some of these nervous and anxious uh, times. Um, That would be helpful. Um, Some folks also like to use ginger for car travel, um, and we can give that to our pets as well um, to help uh, kind of ease their stomach with uh, car sickness. And then just some of the basic things. Um, which you may have figured some of this out. A lot of people don't know that when we travel with our pets, 
they're just like us. If we face forward, we're better off. Um, and dogs and cats that are restraining carriers or in a seat belt are less apt to have a problem because they're, they've got their world controlled. They're not seeing as much going on around them and, um, they are a little bit more controlled in their world. So those are good things. And of course, we don't want to feed them right before you get into the car or you're going to have a mess on your hands. And it'll take a little work, but you can do it. Um, it helps if the pet is already crate or kennel trained for getting them used to car travel, but it doesn't have to be that way. So it really just takes a lot of commitment, a little bit of time, and um, you know, really just working on that positive reinforcement with um, kind of every step you go. I never thought about the kennel. I'll try that, and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Good luck, Cheryl. Okay. We appreciate your time. one 405 8405 to talk to any one of the Dream Team right now. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. Did that get your attention? That's how it works on your dog, correcting undesirable behaviors. It's important to handle any pet behavioral issues with love and care rather than pain or punishment. The Pet Corrector allows you to safely change unwanted behaviors in your dog, like excessive barking, stealing food or shoes, or chasing people and dogs. With a simple, you can stop all these problems. Find out more at www.companyofanimals.us and get the dog you've always wanted. Right, Max? Did you know canine caviar diets are formulated with common health concerns in mind, such as diabetes, cancer, and kidney disease? You see, canine caviar uses low GI carbs, which reduce hunger and prolong physical endurance. Free of GMO, gluten, hormones, steroids, and antibiotics, Canine Caviar's five-star dog and cat foods are the only alkaline-based foods in the world, and that promotes a healthy lifestyle for your furry family. Find out more at CanineCaviar.com. I'm a pair of designer shoes so expensive my owner had to give up half decaf skim vanilla lattes just to afford me. So you can imagine my terror when a pipe burst and the apartment started flooding. There I was, trapped in the closet, water rushing all around me. But what was I to do? I'm a six-inch stiletto. It's not like I can run. Your stuff can't protect itself. That's why the GEICO Insurance Agency helps make it easy to switch and save on renter's insurance. Renter's insurance will cover personal property loss or damage as well as provide liability protection. Visit GEICO.com today. Everything you love about fall in one mug. Hey, I'm Eric from Sam Adams. Sam Adams Oktoberfest is here. It's really good. <laughs> Sweet, malty, and delicious. Yeah. Cheers. Oh, wow, that is, that is really though. tasty. <laughs> if I were to think of a taste of, like, Halloween, it'd be Oktoberfest. Smooth caramel roasted malt. In the fall, when I see it, I grab it. The Oktoberfest yeah. is what I look forward to every year. This is just perfection in a glass. Sam Adams Oktoberfest. Enjoy it while it's here. Boston Beer. Boston Beer. Sick responsibly. Hello, this is Dr. Paul on Animal Radio. Take care of the pets and make sure that in these hot days that they get in lots of water and don't tie them outside in the sun because then they get a heat stroke. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. I'm all a tweeter. We are just moments away from Jesse Tyler Ferguson from Modern Family. You know Mitchell. What an actor. Up for an Emmy, I believe. If he hasn't won one, he should. And he should. I'm going to call over and make sure that happens later. Get right on that, Hal. He loves his animals. He has a little dog named Leaf. I mean, he may actually have a couple of dogs. Yeah, I think he got a new dog. His his other dog was Leaf, but I think he got a new dog, and I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It looks like fennel. fennel? Have to, what does name fennel mean? Fennel is a, uh, it's an herb. I it's like I licorice. Thought. It's That's like licorice. I, yeah, yeah, it's but a root. I thought maybe, yeah. there's, maybe it has a different meaning or something. Or it could be just fennel. Maybe. Yeah. He, take, take in mind his first dog is named Leaf. Yeah. So maybe, just... maybe fennel smells like licorice. <laughs> maybe he's got licorice breath or something. Well, we'll find out with, with Jesse Tyler Ferguson in just a couple of minutes. Also on the show, Brandon McMillan this hour. Uh, What are you working on over there in the newsroom? Well, I'm wondering if um, maybe you might live in one of the horrible hundred states. Horrible. I'll tell you what this is. Yeah, it's it's a list and a report 
called The Horrible Hundred, and it's put out by the Humane Society of the United States. And uh, there are 16 states on this, and it's, it's pretty appalling. But uh, we'll give you the whole list and tell you what it's all about coming up. I fear I live in that state because I'm on every list. Our state's on every freaking <laughs> list. You're and just it's, highly you, wanted. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, let's go to the phones for your calls. Before we do that, let's check in, check in with Judy. You have uh, the big prize for this week's Wacky Wednesday contest over at Facebook. I do. I have some bear bites treats bear bites treats bear bites and this is also good for both cats and dogs and even humans if you like beef liver what it is it's 100 percent u.s beef liver it's all natural and bear bites they only have one ingredient just liver. beef liver wow there's no fillers no additives no preservatives so dare to go bear with bear bites oh if you want to pick up some of these bear bites treats Head on over to our Facebook page and upload your Wacky Wednesday pictures. Let's go to the phones. Hey, Paula, welcome to the show. Hi. What's going on with you? My dog, he's he's pit bull mixed with uh, lab, I guess. But anyway, he has an ear infection, they told me. So I was trying to see if there's any kind of home remedies I can use for him or instead of spending a lot of money, uh, what could I do? (laughs) A lot of when we talk about what we can do for ear infections, there's not a kind of one-size-fits-all therapy because a lot of different factors can influence one pet's ear infection versus another. When you say Labrador Retriever Mix, I'm like, whoa, allergies are a biggie, and so are yeast infection in these guys. So there's ways to try to treat these as appropriately as we can and for me that usually involves i like to take a a a swab and i take a sample of the garbage that's inside those ear canals and look under the microscope because that really gives us some good direction at knowing what kind of medicine are we going to need to fight this if you're looking for just a wash or a cleaner that's going to take care of this i'll probably tell you i can't tell you there is one because in many cases if we've got an actual established ear infection there's other things going on Um, there may be allergies there may be inflammation in that ear canal we may need some anti-inflammatories antibiotics yeast medicine so it really kind of depends on what we see physically in the ear as well as what we see on that cytology. And sometimes just even getting a good cleanser. And if we're talking about things like yeast and bacteria, in many cases we'll look for something that has an acidifying effect. Um, so a lot of the pet products now have acetic acid, boric acid, and other agents that help to loosen up the wax and the gunk in the ear so that you can effectively clean things, um, even at home on some level. Um, so. It may be a little tough to say, you know, for your pet's individual case, what I can tell you to do. But um, if you don't already have some medication in hand, I would say, you know, we need to get, definitely get down that road. We need to do what now? Get some medication going for this baby of some form. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at one 405 8405 This is Animal Radio. This is an Animal Radio News Update, brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Pharmacy, with prescription medications and over-the-counter products like Advantix Flea and Tick Medication, delivered right to your door. Learn more at fosterandsmith.com. Hi, I'm Lori Brooks. Many dog people would say their dog is their best friend. But for a growing number of people with various but specific physical, even neurological or mental health needs, a service dog is also an invaluable partner in their everyday life. There are dogs that are highly trained, you know, to see for people, to hear for people, to retrieve objects for people. But also quite common now are dogs that are called dads. That's for diabetic alert dogs. And those dogs provide independence and security by alerting someone to chemical changes in the person's blood sugar levels. Now, for people who have seizures, there are dogs who can tell when a seizure is about to happen. That would be what's called a seizure alert dog. Now, don't confuse that with a seizure response dog. A seizure response dog is a dog that is trained to provide help to a person who is experiencing an epileptic seizure, not to predict the seizure. Now, these dogs can be trained to bark for help or to press an alarm system during a person's seizure. They can also get a person out of an unsafe place during a seizure and help the handler to come around if they end up going unconscious. These dogs also bring medicine or even a phone to a person who is coming out of a seizure. It's pretty amazing how far we've come. 
The Humane Society of the United States Horrible 100 of 2015 list and report includes 100 puppy mills. And you know what? In all those 100 puppy mills, they're only located in 16 states. The Humane Society recommends not purchasing a puppy from a pet store or over the Internet because they commonly are sourced from puppy mills. And they remind us all that the only way for a potential buyer to know if they are purchasing from a humane and responsible breeder well, is to visit the breeder of the dog they want in person so they can see how and where that puppy was raised. But in alphabetical order, the 16 states that are on that list are Arkansas, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, New York, Ohio, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Texas, and Wisconsin. I'm Lori Brooks. You can get more breaking animal news anytime at AnimalRadio.com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Pharmacy. With everyday low prices on products like Quellin and Rimadil delivered right to your door with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Learn more at FosterAndSmith.com. Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Supplies have a vet VIPPS accredited online pharmacy covering all your pet's needs from heartworm medications and anti-inflammatories like Rimadil to non-prescription items like canine Advantix flea and tick preventive. Doctors Foster and Smith has your pet covered. We'll even contact your vet for you, all with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Low prices every day with free shipping on orders over $49. Shop online at fosterandsmith.com because your pet's health and happiness come first. Stella and Chewy's believes that selecting the best food is one of the most important decisions an owner can make for their pet. They believe that pets thrive when they're fed the same diet they'd get in the wild. Dogs and cats are carnivores, and meal mixers are a quick and convenient way to mix a little raw nutrition and great taste into their diet. Made from premium raw ingredients like grass-fed meat and cage-free poultry with organic fruits and vegetables. Meal mixers help kickstart your kibble. Learn more at StellaandChewy's.com. Hi, this is Joy Behar on Animal Radio. Please stay and neuter your pets. You're listening to Animal Radio. If you missed any part of today's show, visit us at AnimalRadio.com or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. It's Animal Radio, celebrating our connection with your pets. Here's the toll-free number, one 866 405-8405. Dial carefully. I believe if you dial 800, you're actually voting for one of the American Idol contestants. <laughs> so you want to make sure you get that right. And keep that number like on your refrigerator so that if you need it, like during the middle of the week, you have a question about your pets, you can call that number. And, of course, you can do the same thing from the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. You can ask your questions uh, all week long. And we're just getting ready to kick off. In fact, on the uh, of the 11th of this month, we're kicking off the Fido Friendly 7th Annual Month-Long Pet Adoption Tour. Get your licks on Route 66. This is the 7th year doing this, and we have adopted Amazing. so many animals out. Thousands. We're going for a record this year. And our spokesperson this year, so happy to say, is from CBS Series Lucky Dog, Brandon McMillan. Hey, Brandon, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm great. Are you excited about the tour? Are you going to go down there and, and kick it off? We're going to kick it off. Yeah, we kick it off in L.A. And, uh, of course, it goes all the way to Chicago, stopping at a lot of shelters along the way. And, and just in the first just in the first six years of the tour, uh, we've placed over 3,000 pets in their new forever homes. So. Obviously, something's going right. When you go to one of these events that we have in each one of these cities, and I'll tell you the dates that we're going to be in just a couple of minutes, but when you go to one of these events, we have a big spinning wheel, and we have all these sponsors that have donated all kinds of wonderful uh, gifts to us, and you'll get a chance to spin the wheel, as well as see the animals that are in your city that are up for adoption. So if you're thinking that now's the time to get a dog, a perfect time to come out and meet us at one of these shelters. And uh, the first one, as Brandon said, is there in Los Angeles. It's actually in Riverside. I believe it's uh, the Riverside Animal Shelter. Yes, exactly. And is that where you're going to be? I will be there kicking it off. Yep, come down. Um, look, here's, here's, the, here's the reality, and this is why I always say I, I do this. Just in, just in America alone, from the dog standpoint, nearly 2 million dogs are euthanized every year because they can't find home. This is not happening in some far-off place we never heard of. It's happening right here. And that's just for dogs. We're not talking about all animals. And we're not talking about worldwide. 
So it's very important people understand these statistics, know the numbers. When people hear the numbers, when they hear the statistics, it changes their mind. Because a lot of people, they come from the old school. They're like, oh, I'm just going to go to a breeder. I'll go to a pet shop. But when you say those facts, when you say those statistics, now people start listening because then, then it becomes an epidemic. They don't realize that we do have an animal epidemic in this country. They always think of that happening in other countries. Oh, other countries have you know, animal problems. Wrong. We have animal problems right here in America, and they exist domestically. They're dogs. They're cats. Nearly 2 million dogs cannot find homes, so what happens to them? They get euthanized. And this is the exact reason why we do this. This is why the tour exists. This is why I do what I do. You know, another thing is people give up their animals. They take it to a shelter, and they feel it's going to be adopted out. Oh, this is such a great dog. Somebody will adopt it. Not, not necess- true. Not necessarily. Yeah. Not necessarily. You don't know that, you know. And the fact is, the shelter is, you know, the bursting at the seams with dogs. So, unfortunately, if that dog sits in there for too long, we all know what happens to it. It's not a risk they take. It's the risk that they're pushing off onto the dog that they're going to lose its, you know. Yeah. It's, that's course, just so yeah. sad. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and I, I mean, I prove it time and again on Lucky Dog. I, I find some, I, I find incredible dogs. You know, everybody thinks, everybody has a stigma or the stereotype of shelter dogs like they're damaged goods. Right. I, yeah. I beg to differ. Well, you know, some people will say, I want a certain breed. And then that's when I say, you know, there's a breed rescue for just about every breed. Yeah, exactly. And I always tell people, you got to think about personality, too. Um, I know people, they go for looks, they go for aesthetics first. Um, <laughs> and I say, you got to, you really, you can't count out personality. Personality, I go for first. Because, I mean, look, I'm, I'll be the first to admit, I was never a Chihuahua person until. I happen to get my chihuahua. I'm a foster failure for her. <laughs> oh, uh, we love those kind of people. <laughs> she, yeah, I, I, you know, I adopted her with the idea, with the intent of finding her a home. And, um, well, it's been five years now. I just can't find a home for her. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, the rea- but the reality is I never planned on having a chihuahua. Next thing you know, I fell in love with her personality. And that's exactly what I tell people all the time. I say, you know, you got to go for personality first, then go for aesthetics. Because the personality is what you truly remember. Yeah, and people need to get a dog well, that need... fits their lifestyle. You yeah, know? they get if these overactive an... dogs and they have a sedentary lifestyle. Yeah, it's not a fit. you got to look at the oh, whole picture. Absolutely. You know, there's a lot that goes into it, you know. And look, the reality is, and I say this all the time, is some people, some people, depending on their lifestyle, they might not, they might not meant to, to have a dog at that point in their right. life. I mean, if you go to work for 12 hours a day, you're going to lock the dog up in your apartment. Maybe you're not meant for a dog right now. <laughs> or a puppy. You think about all the people who just want a puppy, and, and they're going to be gone 12 hours. Who's, that puppy needs to go in and out, and it needs interaction, needs to be socialized, needs to play and be trained. Yeah, that reminds me of a story. I had a, um, I had a guy on. I had a guy ask me years ago. He says, I wanted to get a, a husky puppy. He says, uh, so should, I, should I get one? I said, well, I mean, if you work a lot, you don't have the time to raise it. It uh, might be a bad idea. Well, he went ahead and got it anyway. I happened to catch him. I ran into him a couple of years later, and he told me all about the story of raising the husky when he was gone eight, ten hours a day. And he says uh, he had to replace like four rugs, uh, three couches. He actually had to replace a flat screen TV because he thought it was a good idea to leave the animal planet on when he left. And the dog actually went through the TV. Wow. Oh, oh no. Here are the dates of the tour. So uh, we're kicking off this Friday, September 11th, 11 a.m. at Riverside Animal Shelter here in the L.A. area. We're also Saturday at the Van Nuys L.A. Animal Shelter on uh, Van Owen Street in Van Nuys. We'll put all these dates over at AnimalRadio.com. Uh, we'll be in Phoenix, Albuquerque, Santa Fe, Amarillo, uh, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, Joplin, Missouri, San Luis, Missouri, Chicago, Illinois, Springfield, Illinois, Kansas City, and Miriam, Kansas. Brandon, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, guys. We're going to head back to the phones, toll-free, 1-866-405-8405 for your calls right now. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. How can we help you, Carl? Why, I was just wondering something about my dachshund. About a month ago or so, one eye went turned white. She's drinking a lot of water lately and urinating a lot. I mean, really, a lot. Mm, okay. Is she having any urine accidents? Yeah. At night or during the day, or does it matter? It doesn't matter. And it's, she's been just stepping out of her bed in the back room and sometimes doing it. 
Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, a couple of things you mentioned there, Carl, that really get me a bit concerned here. She's an older gal, so we keep our eyes open for some of these older pet problems. When, when you're describing the white change in the eye, that does make us concerned about cataracts, um, among other things. But cataracts can be associated with old age in dogs, but also can be associated with diabetes. So when you say that she's drinking a lot, peeing a lot, and having urine accidents, diabetes definitely comes up on my radar first and foremost. Yep. And, uh, among other things unrelated to the to the changes in the eye, things in an older pet that will cause them to drink a lot and to urinate a lot can involve the liver, can involve the kidneys. Sometimes diseases uh, such as Cushing's disease can cause changes like that as well. But I would say this would really warrant you getting this baby um, over to the veterinarian and getting some basic lab work pulled on her. Um, and, and that, I think, would be a great starting point. Something else you start doing is a little bit of throwing up with a lot of clear liquid. It's say follow those cues that she's telling you and changes in, in those potty habits, changes in her eating, vomiting, all of those things take very seriously. And I'd, I'd get her into the vet and let's get some laps pulled on this kid. Yeah, because I'll tell you what, you know, it's, I wanted to get her in sooner than this, but I'm retired. I'm 71 and money's kind of tight running to the vets all the time, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, times are what they are for everyone, but there's some basic things that can be done. And, you know, there's a a ton of things that I can think of that I would screen for. But, you know, there's always kind of a process of, you know, we'll start with step one and what's going to be that test and and step two beyond that. And we may be able to get a feel for what we need to do without necessarily getting into thousands of dollars. So, you know, don't be afraid of, you know, talking to your veterinarian about those options and, and what might be the best thing for her. Pack her up in the car, Carl, and let's get her in and see your veterinarian. So my best wishes for her. I hope that everything turns out okay there. 1-866-405-8405 to connect with any one of the Dream Team here at Animal Radio. This portion of Animal Radio is underwritten by Pet Playgrounds. They are the makers of the safest and most reliable real dog fencing system in the world. Pet Playgrounds is a real fence. It's not an electric fence. It offers real climb, dig, and chew protection for any breed. Listen up, use the code ANIMALRADIO at checkout, and you'll save an extra 10%. Learn more at PetPlaygrounds.com. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. I believe we have Paul on the phone. Hey, Paul, how are you doing? Just fine. How are you today? Good. How can we help you? Well, I, uh, would like to speak to Dr. Debbie about, uh, a allergy problem with my miniature schnauzer. Yeah, you didn't recognize her today because she has this, uh, ponytail <laughs> thing going on, a little pigtail thing. I sound thing. very young. <laughs> What's going on with your schnauzers? Well, I have two and, uh, they're three and a half years old and one is fine. Uh, after two years of feeding the same feed, I, I feed lamb and rice, uh, pedigree lamb and rice. Okay. And uh, she developed a a- skin allergy. I've had her to the vet three times. I've spent a little over $1,000 at this point. Wow. <laughs> and uh, the vet uh, keeps giving me different medications. Now, there's one medication he gave me for her ears that work real well. Her ears actually, the allergy actually closes her ears up. And it, it works real well, but she still has problems with her skin. I okay, what does she have hurt. going on with the skin? What's it look like? It's red and inflamed. Uh, at one point, she lost all the hair on her stomach, and now it's all come back. Uh, I give her a bath every every week when I come in off the road. She, they, the kids stay home with Mama uh, while I'm on the road. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, I give her a bath every week with the special oatmeal shampoo, and then it seems pretty good. Uh, it smells, it has an odor. Like, uh, I even mentioned to the vet, I thought, uh, it smelled like, um, maybe a, uh, yeast infection. Like old socks. <laughs> yeah, it does. And her, yeah. her fur gets out almost sticky. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, uh, then, uh, when I give her the bath, she seems a lot better. The next morning, it isn't as inflamed. And then by the time I get home the next week, we start all over again. Okay. So you're trying a bunch of different medical regimens. Has that included, um, you mentioned some antihistamines. Has that included any other type of anti-itch medicines, antibiotics, any other types of products? He seems to be really be uh, 
hooked on Benadryl, and I, I, I don't want her living on Benadryl the rest of her life. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Is there any problem with her taking Benadryl for an extended period of time? You know, there's really not as long as, you know, everything else is healthy. Um, and, and for some pets with mild allergies, there's absolutely nothing wrong with treating them with an antihistamine, um, almost as a sole therapy. The problem becomes when we have a pet that their itch or their skin disease is, is bad enough that that just doesn't do enough. So um, if that's a situation for your baby, then I, I'm going to say, yeah, I would like to address some of the other things that may be present. And one big thing that you said is that smell, that kind of stinky smell where where there's actually like a sticky feel to the skin, there's probably other things kind of tagging along with um, allergies at that point. So allergies kind of trigger this whole cascade of other things in the body, yeast infection, bacterial infections. Um, so there's other things that I would do. And I usually like, at my office, I like to get a little progressive about some of these things. I take skin sa- skin, skin sa- samples, I say that a lot of times, <laughs> five times fast, <laughs> and look under the microscope because we learn a lot when we look at the surface of the skin. And it may very well be that uh, we need to try an antibiotic round. Um, We may need to try oral yeast medicines to treat what is actually going on in that surface of the skin. Kind of like that, you know, that one commercial where those little green guys are dancing around and they're having a good time down in the people's lungs. That's the way I like to look at the skin is that there's other stuff dancing around there that we just can't focus on just the allergies alone. Uh, That being said... (laughs) <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm not dissing your vet because, like I said, Benadryl is, is great in some situations. But um, And then the other thing we look at with allergies is that we can treat allergies symptomatically. We can't cure them, um, but we can also take a step further and try to find out ways that we can avoid them, um, certain triggers. Or we can try to kind of change the immune system a bit to try to make it react differently to those allergens. So for some pets, allergy testing is a way to go, either doing that with a skin testing, um, usually through a dermatologist, um, or through a blood testing. So there's a lot of other things we can try in that realm if we really want to get to the nitty-gritty there. Um, okay. Now, medication you, you wise. spoke a lot about uh, food allergies. Mm-hmm. Uh, she sure. had the same food all her life. She doesn't eat any people food at all. Uh, the only time she gets treats is on the weekends when Daddy's home, and mm-hmm. uh, that's chicken. I stay completely away from beef because I have a pet skunk also, and oh. <laughs> uh, the skunk can't eat beef at all. Uh huh. So, so yeah, food allergies can play definitely a role with you know layering on top of uh, inhaling allergies or what we call the seasonal allergies. So, not nothing's wrong with lamb and rice. Um, it used to be a great allergy diet many, many years ago, but eventually pets can get sensitized to that. So um, it might be worthwhile to switch to a, an alternate protein, maybe something like a duck potato-based food or a venison-based food, and to go with that for a couple months and see if, you know, some of the skin signs, if there's any improvement, because it really can make a difference for a good proportion of, pe- of people, pets out there. I'm having trouble with the peas today. What is this here? <laughs> but I would definitely give that give that a whirl there, Paul. I mean, um, you know, okay, and if you're not so happy with what smart or... I would work work through a veterinarian because um, we really want to go with um, a special hypoallergenic diet. So not that there's not good general foods out there, but if we're working for allergies, we want to get your pet on the right thing. Make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck, um, and, and your vet veterinarian can you direct you the best way there. Should my wife not... uh, separate the two girls at feeding time and feed her the uh, the special diet? I sure would. Yeah. One. Okay. Yeah, unless your other pet had the same problem, um, but I don't see a reason because in a lot of these cases, you know, we treat the food as a type of medication almost, so we don't really need to give it to the other dog. You know, we're not going to probably do that. I so, was yeah, so but... happy you people came on to XM. Oh, well, thank you very much. So uh, are we. Glad to be here. <laughs> you're very informative, and you're also very entertaining. Oh, well, good. Thank you very much. Thanks for having you. I thank you very, very much. <laughs> Paul, we appreciate your call today, 1-866-405-8405. I think it's so fun to have brand new listeners. You know, if you're new, we'd love to hear from you. You don't have to call in just because your animal's sick or if there's something adverse going on in on in your life. <laughs> like stuttering Spit it out, Hal. Right. It's contagious, Hal. <laughs> it's just a celebration of our pets. <laughs> Friendly Magazine presents the 7th Annual Month-Long Pet Adoption Tour, Get Your Licks on Route 66, along with community sponsors Zeus Dog Toys, Pet Curin, 
Dirt Magic, and Blue Dog Bakery, and media sponsor Animal Radio, the tour travels from L.A. to Chicago, powered by Sprinter Reynolds, stopping at shelters along the way to support adoption events with a giant spinning wheel filled with prizes you can win. Log on to Get Your Licks on Route66.com to find out where the tour stops near you. You might just find your new forever friend. Celebrating the connection with our pets, this is Animal Radio, featuring your dream team, veterinarian Dr. Debbie White and groomer Joey Villani. And here are your hosts, Hal Abrams and Judy Francis. Welcome. If you just joined us, just a few minutes, we're going to talk to Jesse Tyler Ferguson. He's from Modern Family, one of my favorite, if not my favorite, TV show right now on ABC. He plays the attorney. Yeah, uh, Mitchell. 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 Pr- Mitchell Pritchett. Mitchell Pritchett. And uh, loves his animals, has a little uh, dog named Leaf, and, and possibly another dog named Fennel. We'll find out the details in just a few minutes right here on Animal Radio. Uh, we're going to head to the phones, toll-free for your calls, one 405 8405 Don't forget, you can also ask your questions directly from the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android and BlackBerry, and it's a free download. And not only can you ask your questions, you can listen to old shows or, or new shows, uh, shows that haven't happened yet. I actually think you'll you'll hear shows on it that wow. might be happening years from now. I don't know if it's that miraculous. Let me know. It's so a pretty miraculous. I'm going to coordinate the scheduling of it. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, though, you can ask your questions about your pets when we're not on the air. You know, it could be like Tuesday night, late Tuesday night. Your your dog gets into something you want to know uh, exactly what to do, and you want to talk to Doctor Debbie. You can ask directly from the app. So download that puppy now. Uh, am I going to a news tease? What am I going to? Yes, you are. <laughs> Lori Brooks, what are you working so hard on in the newsroom over there? Okay, in- insert a horse whinny here. <laughs> you ever wonder what that sound means? I think it's fascinating to wonder about what animals might be saying. And researchers have just studied horse whinnies. And uh, we'll tell you, there's a couple of different kinds of whinnies. And really? they mean totally different things. Yeah. I'll share with you in just a little bit. I learned so much on this show. I'm going to stick around for that. I can imagine they have a happy Winnie and an angry Winnie. Sort of. You don't want to be on the receiving end of an angry Winnie. Let's take another call for Dr. Debbie. And we have Carolyn on the phone. Hi, Carolyn. Hi. Hi. How are you doing Um, today? I'm fine. What's up? Um, I have a female shepherd mix. She's between 9 and 10. She's a rescue dog, but that's what the... Her veterinarian estimated her to be. We've had her since before she was a year old. Right before Christmas, she was diagnosed with diabetes, and we've got her on insulin. And this past week, she went blind. And we took her to a a specialist, an eye specialist for animals, and um, he said that we can get cataract surgery to remove the cataracts and that she's got a 90% chance to regain her vision, which is what our prayer is, of course. And um, not that I'm second-guessing him, because I I trust him, but um, I just kind of wanted to get a feel from from her to see if she's had an experience with this Mm -hmm, um, and other dogs. Is your dog doing well with the diabetes in other ways? Are we fairly well-regulated, or are they having any difficulties with her blood levels? We are in the process of getting her regulated, and we have to wait for the surgery to get that done. She is going mm-hmm. this week yeah. for another all-day, I guess, like a glucose tolerance panel, mm-hmm. um, okay. because he had adjusted it once two weeks ago, and this week we're going to do another one to see if she needs to be adjusted again, and I understand we have to get that regulated. Um, she's on seven units twice a day right now, which the eye specialist says that's kind of low. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, and um, you know, might be, and usually with insulin, if anything, we try to go slow to bring those levels go to a higher dose. We hate to go too high and then have problems. It's much better to to start low and work your way up. But yeah, I will totally agree that we want to try to get your pet somewhat regulated before we talk about surgery. Um, um, so it's to the best of our abilities. Um, but we know that even well regulated diabetics can get these cataracts. And um, I will agree also that um, usually success is wonderful. And so about 90, 95% of dogs' vision will be restored. But there are some what-ifs. And one would be we'd want to have her in good health and, you know, the diabetes 
pretty well regulated first. Secondly is ophthalmologists will typically do a retinal check. Um, so they want to do a retinogram to make sure before we put her through the surgery that what we got going on back there, that we've got a good retina. Um, so that would be something that can help give us a little peace of mind before we get into the surgery um, if we're going to expect to have good vision afterwards. Um, but after cataract surgery, there are some you know possibilities of problems. So um, down the road, I'd say probably 80% of dogs that have cataract surgery still have good vision and meaningful vision. Um, but we do see problems postoperatively with inflammation or what we call uveitis. Um, we can have some concerns for things like glaucoma. Um, so those are things to be aware of going into it, um, that um, no surgery is without any potential complication. But I'd say for the vast majority of dogs with uh, the sudden onset cataracts, um, surgery is wonderful. And if it is possible and within your means, I would certainly um, encourage you to, to go down that road. Yeah, it was just so scary because seeing your little baby, because my dogs are my children, Sure. And mm-hmm. I, you know, you you see her playing one day, and then the next day you see her bumping into stuff, and it's just so Aww. so scary, you know, to see her, and you're like, what's going on? And then she's got the clouded eyes and everything, and I'm just so thankful that she, you know, as soon as we can get this sugar regulated, that that we we are able to get her the surgery to restore her sight because, you know, I want her to be happy, and I don't want her to be thinking, why can't I see? Mm-hmm. And sure. You know, I don't know if dogs think that way, but I'm sure she's wondering what the heck is going on. Mm. And yeah. now that I know for... that she can get the surgery, it's like, you know, kind of giggle, like, oh, watch where you're going, honey. <laughs> and, you know, say, Aww. oh, you're, we're going to have to get her a helmet and stuff. But, oh. you know, and I feel bad for any dog that, that goes through this. And naturally, you know, I cried for three days. and But I'm happy now knowing that she can. And I just kind of wanted to get a feel. Yeah, definitely. You know, and... Some dogs can do perfectly fine as a blind dog. I, I would have to say that dogs that have a slower onset of cataracts tend to manage and adjust a little bit to their vision loss a little bit easier initially than those that lose it all of a sudden. So, you know, but, you know, even without surgery, there are dogs out there with cataracts that are diabetics and they can live very full, meaningful lives with accommodations. Um, but, uh, you know, the fact that this uh, surgery does have such a, you know, a good outcome for vision, it, it is something I try to encourage folks to, to look into, if at all possible. Yeah, it amazes me that, that she knows this house so well. <laughs> that ah, that knows. Yes. Or, or, or an end table or anything. It's like, whoa. And it makes me wonder, could I do that? I don't think so. So she just, I, I just say she's a wonderful little trooper. Yeah. Uh, but well, I'm give her a pat on the head from us. We wish her the best, and uh, best luck as you're uh, adjusting that uh, insulin level and, and dealing with that diabetes. So have a great one. Thank you for the call. This is Dr. Debbie with Animal Radio at one 405 Now that I got your attention, I want to tell you this portion of Animal Radio is underwritten by Company of Animals, and they want to help you, especially if your dog steals food, toys, shoes, remote control smartphones yeah. <laughs> if they do you need the pet corrector from company of animals it produces a gentle little hiss distracting your dog and enabling you to bring focus back to you where you can reward them for not stealing the phone find out more over at company of animals.us it is toll free at 1-866-405-8405 hello sherry how are you good how are you today well, I've got a nine-month-old Yorkshire Terrier who is in heat, and I have some questions. Okay. <laughs> well, go ahead. What do we got going on with that heat cycle? Okay. Well, it seems like it's been lasting forever, but um, she went through the stage where the other dogs wanted to be around her, but I didn't notice anything, and then her vulva started to swell, and she started to bleed very little bit. The bleeding has stopped. Her vulva is still swollen. Um, my curiosity is, will that go back down? And the oh, other yeah. Question, w- w- eventually, will it? It will, yes, but there's okay. conditions to that. So go ahead. What's your other part of the okay. question? Okay. The other question was, I have a 20-pound little terrier mix that is male who locked up with her this morning. And... She, and he's fixed. <laughs> and she um, she didn't know what to make of all of it, and we could didn't know what to do. 
so we put them in the bathtub. <laughs> wow. To get them apart. So that's a crude awakening or a rude awakening, I should say. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see. Let's talk about this baby's heat cycle. So how long has she actually been in heat? You said she bled for a couple days. Yeah, I would. my best guess is that she's probably been in heat a good 16 or 17 days. Okay. Well, the unpleasant news here, Sherry, is that wow. dogs can be in heat for a long period of time. And okay. we don't really get too worried up until about six weeks. Um, so this whole process of discharge and vaginal swelling, all of that kind of can span that time frame. And for some dogs, they may only have bleeding for as little as one day, but some dogs will bleed up to three weeks. And that vulvar swelling, the vaginal swelling that you're describing, that can last up until that six-week period of time after that first bleeding starts. So you got a long period of time. And there are some dogs that will have a little bit of residual swelling in the vaginal area afterwards. But um, it, it's very interesting to me that you said that you have a male that is neutered and they actually tied because usually that's a, a pretty much a hormone driven thing on his part for that process and that physical connection that where they actually got stuck together. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes. And they weren't moving. They were just staring at us like, what do we do next? Oh, my no. goodness. <laughs> he, he must be an oversexed little fella if he's already yeah. had his little little bazonkers taken away from him and he's still and doing the deed. And he's been well, after I, her for four or five days and we just, you know, kept shooing him and kept shooing him. Well, this morning we didn't get to him fast enough, so. Yeah, well, and has he been recently neutered or is that something he's been, oh, no, that's he's been seven, done for? Or he's eight. Oh. Yeah, he's, no, it's been a long time. <laughs> okay. Well, very good. Now, and of course, I'm going to have to put my little advertisement in for your little girl is to get this gal spayed. Um, oh, because I know, but I want puppies. I know. I'm not listening. I'm not listening to that because I'm going to talk about her health benefits. And I, there's a ton of Yorkie puppies, and I'll tell you that at my shelter, it breaks my heart. I can guarantee you if I walk through today at our local shelters here in Las Vegas, I can find many purebred Yorkies sitting in the midst of those cages waiting for a home. So any pets that you add to the, the pet population are going to displace those, and those are going to be euthanized because someone's going to want a puppy before they're going to want to take on a, a pet that needs a home that's already on this earth. So I would have to put my advertisement in for that, but also for her health and, and her well-being just to help prevent mammary cancers and a lot of these reproductive conditions complications. So, sorry, Sherry, I just had to put that in there. And I know Hal's behind me on this one. Well, yeah, but I didn't want to open my mouth at all on this because you're doing so well, just t telling it like <laughs> it is. I appreciate your call, Sherry. one 405 8405 I got to tell you, that whole tie thing is going to be a very amusing thing. Everybody looking at each <laughs> other. What, what do we do next? And your suggestion really is just to have a cigarette, sit back and enjoy it, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they are, so you might as well just sit back and <laughs> maybe not watch them, but turn on the TV, you know, distract and don't watch them. <laughs> You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. Did you know canine caviar diets are formulated with common health concerns in mind, such as diabetes, cancer, and kidney disease? You see, canine caviar uses low GI carbs, which reduce hunger and prolong physical endurance. Free of GMO, gluten, hormones, steroids, and antibiotics, Canine Caviar's five-star dog and cat foods are the only alkaline-based foods in the world, and that promotes a healthy lifestyle for your furry family. Find out more at CanineCaviar.com. Here's another Pet Playgrounds Minute. All you have to do is look outside your window right now. You see what a beautiful day it is and how you can freely walk right in and outside your door and enjoy that beautiful weather out there. And wouldn't it be great if your animal could do the same thing Especially your cats, they like to get out in an area where they're safe, but they can be out in the fresh air. And that's why I'm telling you about pet playgrounds. This is a real dog fencing system. It's not an invisible fence. It's not the fence that's going to shock your dog or anything like that. It's a real fence, but it is nearly invisible because when you stand back about 10 or 15 feet, you can barely see it. It's that color. And it provides real climb, dig, and chew protection. So if you have a dog that likes to chew... A wood fence wouldn't work. They'll chew their way right through the <laughs> fence. Not with a pet playgrounds fence. Or if you have a chain link fence, your dog can actually use it as a ladder and just climb right over it. They, they can't can... do that with this fence. No, they can't. Learn more about pet playgrounds at petplaygrounds.com. Visit petplaygrounds.com. Yeah, petplaygrounds.com. Dogs need to run free or not. Electric fence makes it easy. 
easy. Your dog can't climb or dig or chew. It's perfect for your best friend and for you. Call us at one 800 Use animal radio code at checkout to save 10% at PetPlaygrounds.com. Hi, I'm Charlotte Ross on Animal Radio. Please remember to spay and neuter your pets. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. If you're thinking of adopting a pet this summer, this is the summer, I'm saying. And you happen to live along Route 66. Yes, we're doing it once again. The 7th Annual Get Your Licks on Route 66 Adoption Tour, along with Fido Friendly Magazine. Actually, Animal Radio is along with Fido Friendly. They're leading the charge to adopt many more animals than they did last year along Route 66. And uh, we're going to be stopping by your city, hopefully. And we'll have a list over at AnimalRadio.com. It's always fun. We should go on that. I know. Why do we, we to have to stay there. in the stay studio? Stay back here in the studio, yeah. Susan gets to I volunteer. It. I'd love to be the one who collects the most dog kisses. Oh, I was going to say, did you volunteer to stay here in the studio? I, no, no. Oh, you just said you volunteered. We said we, we don't want to have to no. be here. You said you volunteer. Uh, I've got it on tape. Let's go, Hal. Is someone taping this? Is this on tape? Oh, I don't know. Because if this is on tape, we got to find out who has that and, and make sure it's destroyed <laughs> immediately. Miss Lori Brooks, what are you working on over there in the newsroom? Well, um, there's this thing that you find in households, and it kills tens of thousands of animals and even some people every year. And um, they've just discovered a new ingredient that will make it really different and not at all harmful. In fact, you could eat it now and nothing would happen. Ooh, and we'll th- tell you what that, that horrible poison is coming up. Mm. I think I know. But I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Thank you. Hi, Liz. Hi. You wanted to talk to Dr. Debbie? Sure. Sure. Okay. She- <laughs> sure. Uh, Why maybe, not? maybe not. She's there. What the heck? <laughs> well, hi. What can I do for you? Well, I have a German Shepherd who has um, a degenerative myopathy, and okay. people keep telling me when it's time for her to be put to sleep, she's going to let me know, because she's still acting like a puppy, she's still acting like she's the boss, she's eating, she just falls a lot, mm-hmm. um, like she'll fall down my steps. She falls down your steps? Oh, well, dear. we have a bi level, so we have no steps. I mean, we have no way to get in and out of the house besides going up and down the steps. I mean, okay. she's going to, like, fall. She just throws sort of this Bambi thing down the steps. Okay. Where her back feet kind of kind of collapse under her. She's not falling yeah. down and tumbling down large amounts of stairs. That's what I was concerned about. Oh, uh, no. No. Okay. No, we All have right. it worked out. We have a rug at the bottom of the steps to catch her so that she doesn't do the Bambi thing when she gets to the bottom of the steps. We have a rug by her food dish so she doesn't, you know, she doesn't slide. But my dilemma is when should I put her to sleep? Yeah. And I guess the biggest problem with degenerative myelopathy, which basically this condition is a progressive deterioration of the coding coding along the spinal cord. So when that happens, dogs lose their function to their back legs. They can get wobbly, kind of crossing over with the back feet. They'll even scuffle their back feet and wear their toenails down. So that progresses to the point where they lose more and more control with the back legs. That eventually can progress up to the front legs as well. Um, but for most pets, the disability with the back legs is really where that is um, the biggest problem and when we first diagnose that. The good thing is that it's not painful, um, other than the secondary things that they do to themselves, um, d- dragging the top surfaces of the feet, um, getting pressure sores, um, things like that that we have to deal with. Um, so that tends to be the biggest part of um, kind of managing these babies. Now, I will tell you that um, one great thing in managing dogs with degenerative myelopathy is the benefit of physical therapy. Now, there is no cure for this condition, but we know that physical therapy can help give us more meaningful time, and it keeps them more ambulatory, keeps them moving on those limbs in a meaningful way for a longer period of time. And there are some studies that have looked at this, and dogs in intense physical therapy can survive periods of time over 255 days of good quality time. Some with no therapy can be as short as 55 days. So that's kind of the scope of the time frame we'd be looking at. And if physical therapy is something you can work with your local veterinarians or specialty groups, that might be something to do. Um, But your question, basically, how do you know and, and will she tell you? Gosh, 
I have, in all my years, I don't feel that with this condition, the dogs really tell us, meaning that they accept that they're at that point. Um, they're not in right. a lot of pain. Right, and she seems to be a little, a little depressed, but not enough that she still isn't bossing. I have two other dogs. She's still bossing them around, and you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, and, and that's the the thing. It is a disability, so it becomes more when we can't get up to do the bathroom needs, when we have secondary infections or pressure sores or things that are complicating their life. So, no, I don't feel that she's going to tell you when it's time. This is different than hip dysplasia. Hip dysplasia, the pets are in a lot of discomfort. They have kind of similar signs, but they're in a lot of pain. So um, she's not going to be in that category. So as her caretaker, you're going to need to watch out for that. When her quality of life, getting around is limited, or when she is at a point where she may jeopardize her own safety, falling downstairs, um, you know, getting into situations she cannot get out of, um, that is where that the quality of life really becomes down. So, yes. um, you know, and to also use your veterinary resource as well. Um, you know, having that professional that you can consult with. Um, and I can tell you, we do this all the time, talking about, you know, is it time? Um, someone who knows your pet's physical status at that moment can also help you greatly with this decision. Okay. Hope that helps. I appreciate your call today. Let us know how it goes. one 405 8405 Sure, we'll take your calls. Animal Radio is underwritten by Pet Playgrounds. They are the makers of the safest and most reliable real dog fencing system in the world. Dog trainers, veterinarians, and dog lovers, they all highly recommend Pet Playgrounds because it is the best option to protect your dog. Listen up. Use the code ANIMALRADIO at checkout. You'll save yourself an extra 10%. Learn more at PetPlaygrounds.com. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. Hi, this is Joyce DeWitt on Animal Radio. Please stay and meet your animals. Thank you. This is an Animal Radio News Update. Brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Pharmacy with prescription medications and over-the-counter products like Advantix Flea and Tick Medication delivered right to your door. Learn more at fosterandsmith.com. Hi, I'm Lori Brooks. Swiss researchers in Zurich have analyzed the structure of about 20 different horse whinnies, you know. That noise. Uh, Throughout the testing period, the researchers recorded vocalizations the study horses made, and then they analyzed the acoustical properties of each. When I read this, I thought, wow, that's kind of like like whale noises, whale sounds. Well, this data on the horses revealed that horse vocalizations, unlike those of most mammals, have two frequencies. Another surprise, though, came when the researchers compared the vocalizations, the whinnies, that the horses made during positive and negative situations. They say shorter and lower frequency whinnies are positive, while negative whinnies, which happen during stressful, more not-so-great times, they start at a much higher pitch in frequency and are also longer. Uh, Much more remains to be learned, though, from analysis of equine vocalizations. The next step, they say, for us to find out if other horses can extract the emotional information and differentiate themselves between negative and positive whinnies. It would be interesting to find. I've had horses, so I thought that was fascinating. And every year, about 90,000 pets and wild animals and about 5,000 humans, too, as a matter of fact, are poisoned by antifreeze because ethylene glycol, the main ingredient in antifreeze and de-icing chemicals, is broken down in the body into toxic compounds. But there's been a new discovery that is so great in so many ways. They've discovered a new antifreeze ingredient that actually works better than the old stuff, and this is non-toxic. The new ingredient is propylene glycol. It's actually a food additive, which they say is generally recognized as safe by the USDA, and it cools car engines 60% better than the old stuff, and it's not going to kill pets. It's not unusual for workers in Taiwan to take their pets to work. In fact, an amazing 42% of 900 people who responded to an online questionnaire said their bosses allowed them to take their pets to work. We found this story in the Taipei Times. However, 
Some respondents to that survey said they are required if they take their pet to work to keep the animal crated or caged while they're on the job. I'm Lori Brooks. Get more breaking animal news anytime at AnimalRadio.com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Pharmacy. With everyday low prices on products like Quellin and Rimadil delivered right to your door with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Learn more at FosterAndSmith.com. Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Supplies have a vet VIPPS accredited online pharmacy covering all your pet's needs from heartworm medications and anti-inflammatories like Remedil to non-prescription items like canine Advantix flea and tick preventive. Doctors Foster and Smith has your pet covered. We'll even contact your vet for you, all with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Low prices every day with free shipping on orders over $49. Shop online at fosterandsmith.com because your pet's health and happiness come first. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose-to-nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24-hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription-strength medicine available over-the-counter. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. Hey everybody, this is Brett Michaels, and I just want to say, you, right now, want to take, wait, give me the line again, my brain skipped. Animal Radio, Brett Michaels and Animal Radio. You got it, I knew the Animal Radio, like, okay, here we go. Hey, this is Brett Michaels, you're listening to Animal Radio, and take care of your pets, they will rock your world. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. Head back to your phones, toll free at one 405 8405 in just a couple of seconds. But now I am all at Twitter. We all know the best show on television now. Modern, Modern Family. family. <laughs> By far, it's the best. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we have Jesse Tyler Ferguson joining us, who's not only, you know, on TV, he's kind of like an uptight attorney. Mitchell, he plays Mitchell. But uh, in real life, he's a pet parent and a pet lover. Welcome to the show, Jesse. How you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Well, now tell us about the animals you have at home. You have uh, Jesse, right? No, that's his name. Huh? No, that's I my mean, name. I mean, Leaf. I'm sorry, Leaf. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a dog named Jesse. Just, you, uh, you, that would be a little weird. I have a dog. Yeah, I have a, that would be a little, yeah, egocentric. Um, <laughs> I have a dog named Leaf and a dog named, a new dog named Fennel that I just adopted. Okay, why Fennel? That's my curious question. Why uh, Fennel? That's a great question. Yes. Um, Justin, my husband, was uh, throwing out names, and they were uh, all kind of food-based. There was ramekin, there was cilantro, there was parsnip, paprika, and I just I, I wasn't loving any of them. So I uh, I offered up fennel, and that's the one that that stuck. I like it. I thought maybe you had licorice. That's a breath. pretty cute name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you guys yeah. are foodies and dog foodies, I guess. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Do the, yeah, I think the, the Purina One and Pet Finder uh, for the Purina One Difference campaign, uh, which is a great way to celebrate people who are making a positive difference in the life of dogs. And that's how we, uh, that's how Fennel came to us through uh, the help of Purina One and Pet Finder. Are you looking for people that are making big differences, or is there, what, what's going on with that? Well, no, it just sort of celebrates people who are, you know, making a difference in dogs' lives, either through um, promoting adoption or, you know, making the dogs that they already have, you know, really improving their, their lifestyle. Uh, the thing I'm really trying to focus on is the Purina One 28 Day Challenge, uh, which you can sign up for at purina one dot com slash make one difference. And the great thing about signing up for that right now is um, when you when you do sign up for it, they donate ten dollars to uh, the Pet Finder Foundation. So that's a, a great thing and a great way to give back. Uh, and then also put your dog on a really healthy um, diet for a little while. Very cool. We were just discussing uh, a few minutes ago about how some of us allow our animals in bed. Like I allow my cats in bed, and it drives <laughs> drives my wife crazy. Do you allow Are the they dog supposed to sleep somewhere else? Yeah, <laughs> uh, they have, yeah our dogs have their own beds, uh, but you know, of course, every once in a while for special occasions, uh, we all. We all pile in bed together. How can you not? It's too cute. Exactly. And our, our our dogs are smaller, so you know it's it's not a huge burden having. You know, it's not like we were with the Great Danes. What do you do to spoil them? Do you let them eat off the table? No, they're not allowed to eat off the table. <laughs> they, you know, we we give them treats and you know long walks and uh, 
they they love toys. Our both of our dogs play fetch uh, really well, so you know they they uh, they can do that for hours. Are we going to see any dogs on Modern Family? We have a dog on Modern Family uh, that Jane Gloria has, a little, little Stella. Right. Uh, she's a professional, you know, Hollywood dog. A little Frenchie. She's very professional. Um, uh, our Cameron and Mitch have a cat, um, Snowball. I think it's the, the cat's real name, but I don't know the. Uh, the characters. I don't know if have we, have we ever named it. I don't, I don't know. Um, but uh, I haven't seen Snowball in a while, actually. Uh oh. Uh oh. Are you allowed to take your animals down to the set? Um. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've brought him onto the lot before. Uh, Leaf. I haven't brought Sin on yet. Uh, he's still a little too young. But uh, there are times when I, uh, uh, you know, when I, I need. I, I'm a single parent I, I, on, on certain days when Justin's working, so I'll bring him on the on the set with me. How fun is that? I'm glad we get to take our animals to work here. Jesse, I love your tie the knot program. I think that's so oh, cool. You. I think it would be a great idea if you would put maybe a bow tie on leaf or on fennel yeah. and, and then send the pictures to the Mr. Mo Project on Facebook. What, what really is this? What is the tie the knot program? Oh, I, it's, a, it's a line of bow ties that I have, uh, and all the proceeds go to um, LGBT uh, uh, outreach and equality. Wow. Oh, wow. That is so cool. You are yeah. really multitasking there. Yeah. Yeah. That is a great idea. Thank you. Well, yeah, I think they would really appreciate it, and they would love to see your dogs. Ah, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. All right. Take care, you guys. Thank Take you. care. Bye now. Bye-bye. What's, uh, what's, so what's the program that you were talking about? That he should the Mr. Mo Project yeah. is a program that they sell uh, bow ties. For senior dogs, or they just take pictures. It's something about bow ties, and it's usually senior pit bulls. But they, it's a, a huge program. Look it up on Facebook. I will. Yeah, I never heard of it. Yeah, I hadn't heard. They of it. They do some some really cute stuff. They've got tons and tons of followers. But, you're you're so much um, more hip than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a freaking animal diehard, especially dogs. <laughs> Sorry. You're listening to Animal Radio. If you missed any part of today's show, visit us at animalradio.com or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. Dogs or cats, horse or emu, animals are people too. Bed bugs are back, and just talking about them makes me all itchy. But relief is on the way. She's a nine-pound dog named Nudie, a near-hairless Chinese crested mix who's one of the dogs trained to detect the biting critters. Bed bugs were gone from the U.S. for so long, most thought they were just a myth. But now exterminators say that in the last year, they've been getting 50 times the number of bed bug calls they used to get. Dogs have been used to sniff out termites, but now Perriero says the bed bug training is like hitting the lotto. Nudie was found in a shelter, and she loves to find bed bugs. Her owner trainer just says, find your bees, I guess short for bed bugs, and Nudie jumps on the mattress and starts pawing where they are. I feel much better now. I'm Britt Savage for Animal Radio. Animals are people too. Animal Radio. Nancy. Hey, Nancy, how are you? I'm just fine, thank you. Where are you calling from today? Uh, San Luis Obispo. Oh, listening on KVEC? Yes. That station is so awesome. <laughs> what uh, What's going on today? Well, I called because my husband took my little dog for a walk, and she had a very bad episode of loose stools that looked like it had a little bloody mucus in it. Mm, and okay. I know she's had a little loose stools every once in a while, but I got really concerned, and my husband was really freaking out. But today she's had nothing but normal stools, and she's eating, and she's acting okay. okay. So I'm thinking it was something she ate, maybe. Mm-hmm. Certainly suspect. And she's how old? She's a baby? Eight and a half months. Eight and a half months? How uh-huh. adorable. She three and a half pounds. <laughs> Oh, how precious. Now, so yes, occasionally dogs will have some blood in the stool. It's usually a function of 
inflammation or lower bowel irritation. So some dogs can eat something that doesn't agree with them. And if they have diarrhea, there can be a straining associated with that. Mm-hmm. Um, so not much is coming out, but they're still pushing. And, and we may see some rectal bleeding with that. Um, the way that would be identified is we see fresh blood in the stool. Um, so it wouldn't be kind of black or tarry. It, it truly has its red characteristics to it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's usually associated with diarrhea or unusual stool. Mm-hmm. So there are dogs that can have occasionally some blood in the stool with normal bowel movements, but it's a little bit less common. So in a young dog of her age, I would say it certainly could be something she ate, and I would retrace in my memory uh, what she had eaten for the last 48 to 72 hours before then, because a lot of times I do find sometimes treat foods are suspect. Um, as much as they love them and they can tolerate them well, um, some dogs say with rawhide chews or edible chews can have a little bit of off stools um, the day or so following eating a kind of an edible treat. Um, and then that leaves also eating those things that they're not supposed to, things in the yard, in the backyard. But in a puppy, I would also make sure that you do have her stool checked um, just to make sure she doesn't have any kind of worms. Um, some different types like whipworms in particular, even tapeworms, we can see some some lower bowel issues there. Mm-hmm. Um, the mucus that you're describing, when I hear people describe that, that, um, just so everyone knows, mucus is produced by the colon as a protective mechanism. So if you're seeing a little bit of slimy stuff, or even sometimes dogs will get a sheath of mucus that kind of covers the stool, it's the body trying to protect them as that's moving through because there's irritation. So Mm -hmm. as long as that's gone and it was only yesterday you're not seeing that further, then it's unlikely it's a major problem. This is Brandon McMillan, host of CBS Dream Team's Lucky Dog, Saturday mornings on CBS. I'm also the spokesperson for the 7th Annual Cross-Country Pet Adoption Tour, Get Your Licks on Route 66, brought to you by Fido Friendly Magazine. This tour will stop in numerous shelters from Los Angeles to Chicago to support pet adoption events across the country. Visit our website at GetYourLicks.com to see where the tour stops in a town near you. And who knows, you might just find your new forever friend. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. And I do believe we're taking some more calls here. Um, And Diane, is Diane on the phone? Yes, hi, Dr. Debbie. Hi, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. Um, I'm having trouble with my German Shepherds. I have two. A female who just turned two in February and a male who is eight months old. Uh, we got the we got the second dog, the male, uh, because the first dog was began wandering, um, running away a couple times a week as far as she could possibly go, um, mm-hmm. and you know it 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 seems to have been, getting the male did not um, help. It actually made it worse. Now they're partners in crime and they run every chance they get. Um, oh, no. If we turn our back for one minute, they are gone. We have six acres of land. We've put up a physical fence. And they jump, they jump it, and we put a, that now we put electric fencing in okay. the physical fence, and they still jump it. Um, and we How high is the do. fence? How high? Yeah, the fence is four feet high. Oh well, now that's not a very uh, high fence for a German Shepherd, so well, so that now, that I could definitely. You're right. I, my, but my hope was once that they we put the fence up that that they see it and go, oh, okay, well we're just going to have to make do with these six acres. Okay. But that's not so, the case. <laughs> that didn't now, happen. W- with your electric fence, is this one of the invisible fences that are in the perimeter and that warn the dog? Yes. Or is it actually a shock fence? Um, it does both. It warns and then shocks. Okay. All righty. Well, the hard thing is here, and I, I guess the other thing I want to ask is, um, are your pets both spayed and neutered? Yes. Okay, good, because that definitely goes a long way for the average dog in de increasing the desire to roam. Now, the challenge is, is that um, you kind of hit upon it, that these two are hooligans, and they're having a blast. They're having like a Thelma and Louise time out, and um, the rewards of jumping that fence and going out and exploring are so huge, and it's really hard to make that an aversive event, even with shock fences. And I have had veterinary colleagues whose own dogs jump through fences that have that shock and it's just they expect it and um, it really isn't a deterrent Um, so we have to look at it in a different way Um, if you do have the ability to use the invisible fence um, and a a little bit 
closer perimeter, that it can correct them before they get to the fence, um, that might be helpful. But in your situation, that fence is really not a very um, high barrier for them, and that really is just kind of like stepping over a, a small wall for them. So the tough thing is that I tell you is, Fence jumping is very hard to stop because it is a fun, playful, self-rewarding behavior. (laughs) So, so really, um, I I do advise if you can't get those physical barriers to change, uh, taller fences, um, or if the invisible fences don't work, then it really does become the best hope for the pets to have them as an indoor lifestyle. Oh, God, they would hate that, though. Um, yeah. Now, if you have um, one of the dogs outside, is there a difference? Uh, you know, yes. Do they look for their buddy and wait for yes. them? <laughs> yes. The, the female will not go without the male. And she was, she was the one oh. who was doing it in the first place. That's the reason we got the male. The male will jump the fence, but he won't run away. He'll run around to the front door. He'll stay on okay. the property. Okay. So yeah. we have tried that, letting them out separately. But, you know, they're both puppies. They love to play. It breaks my heart. We can't afford to get another fence and put it up. I mean, it was thousands mm-hmm. of dollars to fence God, in, yeah. you know, yeah. a couple of acres of our land. Um, I'm, I'm ho- Is this something we can hope they'll grow out of? No, not really. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. What I'm, I'm like doom and gloom here today for you. Uh, but, so that's um, okay. because it's reality. <laughs> Yeah, because this is a fun, rewarding experience, um, I I would not, uh, I- unless we can make things in their yard more fun and more enjoyable, um, that behavior is very likely to continue. Um, and that's where um, truly, I don't want to say giving up and making them indoor dogs, but when they're not supervised, it's really the safest thing for them and the best way to prevent them from having that reward of jumping the fence and going to explore. Now, definitely I would want to make sure we keep their world interesting. So, you know, get them lots of exercise. Um, I don't know if you have horses, you know, go out on runs and have them go following a bike or while you're out horseback riding. If we can get them tired, get them mentally stimulated in their own surroundings, we might not have as much the chance of them wanting to leave and jump the fence. But, um, you know, there's there's no guarantee that we're going to be able to correct this behavior. So, Can I ask another question um, sure, about ahead. the same issue? Is it is it possible if I were to talk to my vet? I mean, I I I feel I'm not a dog that they have a simulating environment. They have two children to play with. They have lots of toys. They have lots of land. Um, they mm-hmm. have each other. Is this could this be a case of doggy ADD? Is there medication? That will keep yeah. them from wanting to wander. There, there can be dogs that have an anxiety component to um, jumping from a yard, but it's usually more of a fearful anxiety. It's not more like a I'm just bored and I just want to like have fun kind of thing. So I don't think that in, or behavior medications are going to be very useful for you. You know, it really does fall more into the situations of a, a pet that is spooked, frightened, or feels like they need to get away in some way and yes in those situations i will go to those types of things but in your situation you know what's stimulating to us is is different for a dog you know we don't really know we don't understand what um what goals they have um digging in the yard may be great fun playing with the kids may be okay fun so it's you know it's a the mindset of the dog and uh when they get out they chase deer and all kinds of wonderful things Absolutely, and that is just so much fun for dogs. So, (laughs) so sorry Um, to give you the bad news there, Diane. And uh, that's that's okay. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. This is Dr. Debbie at one eight six six four zero five eight four zero five. Well, Judy, I want to thank you. That was uh, quite a show today. That is a very big shoe. Thank you, Jesse Tyler Ferguson and Brandon McMillan. Uh, check out Dr. Debbie's books, Yorkshire Terriers, Shih Tzus, Pugs, Mini Schnauzers, How to Be Your Dog's Best Friends. They're from our very own Dr. Debbie. She wrote these little puppies there, and they're awesome. Awesome. So if you have if you have one of these animals, one of these breeds, the Yorkshire Terriers or Shih Tzu or Pug or Mini Schnauzer, you owe it to yourself to have the official manual. It's like the Guardian's manual, yes. owner's manual. Must have. And you can get them over at Amazon. We have links at AnimalRadio.com. Have yourself a great week. Well, thank you for joining us. All right, us. you guys. Bye. Bye, guys. is Animal Radio Network.